Welcome to my lecture online. Don't be fooled. Why do I say that? I probably get more questions on this concept than any other concept on our entire channel. What am I talking about? Well, again, going to the unit circle and looking at the sine of theta and the cosine of theta, where the angle theta is defined here, we can see that this is the opposite side to the angle, this is the adjacent side to the angle, this is the hypotenuse right here, and we pick a point on the circle called xy, so this is the x value, this is the y value, and we can see that the sine of theta is defined by the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, so that would be the opposite side to the angle, that's the hypotenuse, the opposite side is y, the hypotenuse is equal to 1 because we're dealing with a unit circle here. I should probably write unit circle. That automatically defines that the hypotenuse is always going to be equal 1 because it's the radius of the circle. And so therefore we get y over 1 or the sine of theta equals y. And on the cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And so therefore it's x over 1, and so therefore the cosine of theta equals the value of x at that point on the line. So we're under the impression that whenever we deal with the sine, we always talk about the y value of the point, and the cosine always the x value. And that's true for the unit circle, always, 100% of the time. But we're not always dealing with the unit circle. What if my triangle looks like this, and my angle is over here? Again, let's assume that the hypotenuse has value of 1. And so you can see that in this case, the sine of theta is still going to be the finest the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. This never changes. That is by definition the, the definition of the sine of theta. So that never changes regardless the orientation of the triangle or what situation you're dealing with. That never changes. Same with the cosine that never changes. And so for me, to avoid making mistakes, and I make plenty of mistakes when I work on things, at least when I use this definition, I always write it down, I'm less likely to make that mistake. So in this case, the opposite side to this angle is right here, right? This is opposite to the angle, so that's the value of x at that point. And for the cosine, it's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is the y value. So essentially you can then see that the hypotenuse being equal to 1, the sine of theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which is x over 1, which is x. And the cosine of theta, which is the ratio of the adjacent side of the hypotenuse, is y over 1, which is y. So in this case, you can see that the sine is associated with x and the cosine is associated with y. Whenever I do that, they go, well, that's wrong because isn't the sine of theta always equal to the y value and the cosine of theta always equal to the x value? Well, it's only the case when we're dealing with the unit circle. But in the real world, when we have triangles drawn in different ways and different orientations and different locations, it may not be that. And you can always be sure to get it correct if you use this definition and whatever that happens to be, that's the correct value for the sine of theta or for the cosine of theta. And the reason why I say don't be fooled, because a lot of people are fooled if they don't stick to the basic definition of the sine and the, the cosine. So you can see that it's not automatic where the sine is related to y and the cosine is related to x. It can be the other way around depending upon the orientation of your triangle and which angle in the triangle that we're dealing with. And that's why I say don't be fooled.